All right, hey everybody, hey everybody, it's Wednesday. Welcome to my peeps. We've got, um, it's another great day in the world of lacrosse goalies and lacrosse goaltending and lacrosse and all good stuff, so I'm waiting for everybody to come on in. we got really good things happening. Jen, George, you're the first one in with a tie with Joel Rose, so congratulations to the both of you guys. Uh, so good stuff going today. Everybody can hear me okay? Uh, listen when you when you get in, say hi, drop me a note, uh, just uh, you know leave a little comments. I know on your end you get a little message that says hey, you know let them know that you're watching. Um, so that's uh, that's really really cool. We got some record numbers coming on. Jonathan Redfern, good to see you, buddy. Um, and uh, um, yeah, lots of good stuff going on. You know it's the slow time of year for lacrosse. Although uh, a lot of my goalies uh, that I'm doing goalie audits for are still playing. A lot of guys have, uh, and girls too, have like one last weekend coming up here uh, and then a bit of a break through Christmas. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, so if you're listening to me on iTunes um, and, uh, you know, and you're still playing, uh, you know, let me know. Leave a note in the comments if you're live right now. Uh, let me know if your goal is still playing, what they have left, and when your break is for, for Christmas. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, I may take a break next week. I'm not sure. I may, t- uh, I'm definitely take a break on Christmas day. Cause I think right where we got Christmas day is a Wednesday. So, uh, forgive me if I take a day off from my li- Facebook lives, but I'm sure if I did one, I would still have people on here, which is really, really good. So, um, so Ray Stwarski, good to see you, buddy. Um, greetings from Petaluma, Petaluma, California. It's not snowing in Petaluma. Um, so a couple of great things as always, listen, if you, uh, if you know somebody, if you know a parent, one thing that happened this fall, which is really cool since I've started the group, um, and I've basically put, we basically put a hundred people in the group every single month. So, um, which has been really, really neat. Um, but I was getting feedback. I was getting people joining the group who were told about the group from the parent of the other goalie that they were playing at a tournament. And I think that's just awesome. And, uh, you know, I love how as parents, uh, our goalie parents will seek each other out on the sidelines, uh, no matter how the game is going. Um, they'll seek each other out uh, and kind of probably stand off by their own. Um, I, I'd be curious. We should we should create a uh, a bit of a, a list of like where goalie parents like to stand on the field when they're watching their kid. I think that would be kind of fun because then we we get this bit of this uh, like map of where the goalie parents can could have a meet up at every game. Like, uh, so that would be, uh, be pretty cool. So, um, uh, Ray Storsky says his U12 goalie has his first tournament with six V six goals, six on uh, six by six goals this Sunday. Um, Jonathan Redford, I always hype your Facebook page. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, and a lacrosse goal university member there as well. So uh, Jonathan Redford's son, Cooper, um, is U12, right? Um, and uh, we've been doing a lot of work this fall. Uh, you know, Like a lot of my members, um, they'll join for a while, and then they'll take a little bit of a break, and they'll come back in. Um, and so if, you know, if I can help you and, and what happens kind of come January is people are close to lacrosse season, you know, it's time to get a little bit more serious about it. And I will guarantee it. Yeah. I'm going to probably write this on the website, but I'll tell it to you now. Listen, if you join lacrosse goal university and you have me do a goalie audit for your goalie, and if you feel that it was not valuable to you, um, in that first month, I will give you your money back hands down because I will guarantee you that I will give you more insight into your goalie in one goalie audit than you will get from any camp. All right. I guarantee that hands down. Um, um, and so really, um, I want you to know that. So, you know, as soon as you're ready, um, and you, you want to make 2020 your best season ever, ever, then join lacrosse goal university, get access to all the videos, but most importantly, you get access to me doing a goalie audit for your goalie. So, uh, enough of the, of the pitch there. Joel Rose says he walks end to end each quarter and sits about five yards above goal line extended. Cool. Um, and Jonathan Redford stands by the goal, uh, GLE and switch when the goalie switches. Cool. Um, Ray Stwarski getting filmed to send me. Cool. Good stuff. All right. Um, uh, yeah. And, and don't overthink it. You can even get a video of your goalie this year. I worked with a goalie, um, in Long Island and they, uh, were in a situation where they couldn't basically video their athlete during practice. Um, and it was kind of frowned upon during the games. So I think they had to pay. Uh, and so they sent me video of their goalie in the backyard. Like literally it was like dad goalie, um, and like older brother and the dog, the dog would shag tennis balls in the backyard. So you can send me that video and I can, we can still, and we worked it like that for months, which is great. 
All right. So as always, if you haven't already, head on over to lacrossegoalytips.com, get your cheat sheets um, and uh, download that. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm working on, still working on my lacrosse goalie book. This is a massive project, and I don't think I would get it done as nearly fast as I thought thought it was going to happen. Um, the uh, you know a couple topics that um, uh, the topics that came up uh, that I just wrote about and. and got me into thinking about this week's uh, Facebook Live was talking about taking a break. So two things happen this time of year when it comes to goalies. There's either goalies who are still playing, and um, and that's awesome. And then there's goalies who are not playing, and parents who think that for some reason their goalie is all of a sudden get stupid and never going to be able to play lacrosse or gonna, is going to forget how to play lacrosse between now and when the season starts. So I was writing about that in the book, and so I wanted to talk about it today uh, just to get my head, my head around it and, and to talk to you guys who are live, as always. Um, and listening on, if you're hearing me on iTunes, you can always send me a message, Coach Edwards at lacrossegoalytips.com. Tell me what camp you're in. Uh, Mike Tupin, hello, sir. Good to see you. Um, so one of the things to think about is that goalies who are still playing in North America, we have, um, we have this phobia, uh, about athletes who play one sport year round. Okay. And I want to talk to you about this with a little bit of a different perspective. So one of the factors that we have nowadays, because we have can we have travel teams and we have the ability to play like basically year round lacrosse, um, just like we have the ability to play year round soccer or hockey or basketball or uh, soccer is a big one because what's interesting to use about soccer is that worldwide globally, um, there are countries where kids only play soccer. Uh, so I was talking to David Lasday, who was the COO of Israel lacrosse and uh, really great interview, which is up on it should be on the podcast and it's up on my, on our YouTube channel. And you know, he was talking about how over there kids basically learn how to play one sport when they're young and that's it for life. Like, so they play basketball, they play basketball for life. They get involved with like, let's say weightlifting and they're doing weightlifting for life. Um, and, and over North America, we have this ability, uh, basically for all the parents listening, you know, if you played school as part of your sport or, or uh, sorry, played, bleh, played sport as part of school, you know, you got three sports a year, right? And um, and for our grandparents, if that was the case, they, they, they might have had that. I think for a lot of our grandparents, they didn't have that option. It's, it's relatively new. But I know I did. I played soccer in the fall. I played ice hockey in the winter, and I played lacrosse in the spring. But through all that, as I was younger, I, I played a little baseball, um, played a little basketball. Uh, but my favorite each year was I couldn't wait for lacrosse season, right? And... I basically, like we, we would, what was available in, at my age, so I'm 47, what was available at my age was you played like your spring lacrosse and then you played maybe summer, summer ball, but I also played ice hockey too. And I remember some days I would go from a lacrosse game to an ice hockey game to a lacrosse game and, uh, and yeah, it was great, right? And then what happened was now with travel teams, you had this really good experience of lacrosse now all of a sudden. Right, and so this is where a lot of people fall into this boat, and so I want to just kind of clarify this a little bit. So, what would typically happen is like, okay, now you're shelling out money for an experience, so it better be good. And what's happened is that those experiences now, for most of the time, are better than the high school experience, right? So this is relatively new territory, right? So along the way, as sports medicine has kind of has become a thing, uh, a big thing. Uh, as youth sports has become a big thing, now we have these two worlds collide and now athletes are getting injured. And so there is truth to, pardon me, I'm turning my fan off. There is truth to the fact that an athlete who is in a repetitive movement pattern over and over and over again um, can develop injuries. And so that's true. So, so but sports like... Um, soccer and lacrosse and, and ice hockey, they're, they're quite dynamic in a lot of ways. And the athlete is learning how to move. But the principle is this, is you want, if you, you want your athlete to become an athlete and a well-rounded athlete. And so an, what we believe is an athlete that is well-rounded physically, um, is also better to withstand injury. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a truth, right? Like, um, um, 
but the body is incredibly adaptable, right? So I want you to understand that if your goalie has been playing lacrosse like all year long, um, are they more susceptible to injury? I don't necessarily think so, but if they're running around and they have like incredibly tight hamstrings or they're internally rotating their shoulders because they're sitting at a desk or they're on their phone or at the computer, and then all of a sudden they go out to do this dynamic mo- move in lacrosse and they get injured, well, is that lacro- is it is it lacrosse's fault that they've just been playing lacrosse all year? Or is it the fact that they've been overwhelming those couple hours a week that they're playing lacrosse versus all the other hours when they're sitting on their phone or sitting at the desk or watching TV or playing, you know, Fortnite or, you know, watching YouTube clips. You know what I mean? So, so I don't want you to fear that your goalie has, if your goalie has played all year, I don't want you to fear that. I just want you to know, like physically, you've got to look at your athlete and go like, well, are they susceptible to anything? And the way to find that out is you can get them around a really good physical therapist. Okay. But that is a broad statement, all right? You can also get them around a really good strength and conditioning coach who has an interest in movement, all right? So one of our lacrosse school university members is down in Arizona, and I recently referred him to a strength and conditioning coach near where they live um, uh, for their daughter because for this goalie, getting physically better this year is, is, is going to be a, the biggest improvement for them. All right. So, but I, I sent them to this guy as opposed to, he's also an Olympic weightlifting coach. So I know with Olympic weightlifting, you know, you're involved in a lot of the, I mean, you have to have a big interest in mobility and physical ability and things along those lines and, and, um, um, and flexibility. So, so that's where we sent him. Right. So it's really important to understand that. Okay. So if your goalie's been playing all year, that not to fear the fact that they've been playing all year. Now, the flip side of this is if your goalie hasn't been playing, that all like you feel like they're going to forget how to play lacrosse in the in the spring and i'm here to tell you that that either way your belief about it is going to affect a lot of what of how you go through this so to me i always took a break right so so i was playing soccer in the fall i was playing ice hockey in the winter uh, when i got involved in the sport of luge i was in europe for most of the, that year so i couldn't play lacrosse and but I'll tell you this: the the mental break that I had when I came back to the sport, it, whenever that was, was huge, right? And and so there was a little nervousness, like, oh my God, I'm not going to, am I going to forget how to throw the ball or step in front of the ball or catch or doing that? Am I am I I'm gonna am I gonna develop a fear of the ball? Sorry, I gotta slow down. I'm talking way too fast, guys. I apologize. Um, but the benefit to me was always this idea of that having some time away, when I finally picked up the stick again, I was able to feel a difference in me physically. Like I felt a little stronger. I felt a little nervous, but that nervousness actually helped me once I got in the cage. Um, so, so that I believe that can happen over a long period of time. Like I said, I was playing different sports from basically the end of the summer all through till basically March break was when lacrosse started for me. Um, so I played March, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So six months I was playing lacrosse pretty much. And then I was doing other stuff. Cool. Um, now though, if your goalie has been playing lacrosse all year round, now's whether we look at it a little bit differently. We think like, well, are they a little burnt out on lacrosse? Uh, and so th- as a parent, you would know that better than anybody, right? You know, if your kid's eating, you know, if they're happy, Right, you know if they're you know if they're if they're showing signs of disinterest in other stuff, those are signs that hey maybe they need a little break. But now Christmas comes and we have this really we have this almost a forced break for a lot of people. So tell me for those of you that are alive, if you're playing through Christmas, just leave a comment and let me know if you're playing through Christmas, um, and um, and uh, let me see what you're doing. So the one thing I want to share is that. Over Christmas break, well, let, let me take it this way. Anytime you take a break, what the what we're doing is provi- is creating a bit of a mental reset, all right? A mental reset. We're also creating a little bit of a physical reset. So whether it's lacrosse or soccer or underwater basket weaving, we have a thing in Canada. I don't know if you guys know about this. There's underwater hockey. Google it. Like go on YouTube and look for it. It's the weirdest thing ever. 
Um, and so what I want you to understand is that taking the break, we're just trying to get a bit of a mental reset. So if you go into that break and you're thinking like, oh my God, I can't take any break or else I'm good, then you're not an athlete. I'll be totally honest with you. Like, and if you're the parent hearing me and you're worried about that, like you're not an athletic parent. You've got to realize that you've got to have valleys to have peaks, right? Um, you've heard the story and it's attributed to all sorts of different people like Abraham Lincoln and Jesus. And I don't know if Jesus was involved, but I'm just throwing that out, out there. But the story about like the, 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 the new, uh, the new lumberjack to the crew, right? Like the young new lumberjack to the crew. And he's, um, he's out there and he wants to cut down, like he wants to beat the record for the most trees cut down. And so he goes out the first day, day and he just kills it, right? And he takes down all the trees. It's like a new record. Um, and then everybody's like, wow, this kid's just killing it. Second day he comes out, he kills it again, but it's not as good as his first day, right? Then the third day comes and he's out there killing it, but now he like ties the best guy. Uh, and then the fourth day he goes out and his productivity like totally drops off and he's just he's just killing, trying to kill it, kill it, kill it. Nothing happens. And then finally he gets to the end of the week and he's like, I don't understand. I started out so well, but his boss goes like, did you take any time to sharpen your ax? Right. And that's the, the metaphor there is like, you got to take time to sharpen your ax. So, so it doesn't matter to me as your coach, if you've taken all year off, right. Or if you've taken a week off, like uh, Jen George writes that she's her, her goal is playing indoor and has one weekend off during Christmas break. So Jen, I guess my question for you is how do you feel about that? Right? Let me know. Like just write in the message box. Let me know. How, how do you feel about this? Like is it too much, too little? Um, oh, so great. She writes, indoor is no stress at all. Just one day a week, no practice. Sweet. Totally cool. Right? But if you came to me, like, and, and I've had this before as a client. Um, I had an athlete, uh, a goalie, who had taken the, their freshman and sophomore year off from lacrosse. Uh, they had they had taken two full years away uh, from a, being a goalie because they wanted to. There, there was an other sport that they were involved in. I think it was basketball, maybe, or yeah, I think it was basketball. It wasn't hockey. But they then decided, no, it was ice hockey. Sorry. Uh, this kid was a forward in ice hockey. Um, and so they were going to, they were going to pursue that. And then what that didn't work out for whatever reason. And they wanted to come back to lacrosse and they were worried that did, is the break going to hurt them? And to which my answer was like, well, if you believe the break is going to hurt you, no, but, uh, or yeah, yes. But if you believe that that break is going to provide you with all these sorts of benefits, then let's go. And so we did. And by, by the time that kid graduated, they, they went on to a Division II school to play lacrosse, right? And so here was a kid who had, didn't play lacrosse for two years, right? And so, the, and so there's a lot of parents who be like, oh, my God, you know, like you're going to get hurt because you haven't been playing lacrosse enough. It's a different sport, yada, yada. Or you're going to, um, you know, you're not going to be able to get recruited. No one's going to see you. It's all BS, like, it's all BS. If you want to make it happen, you'll make it happen. So if you've had a break, great. If you haven't had a break, that's okay, right? Um, so it's, it's all about your belief to make it work, okay? So a couple comments here. Mike Simmons right? my daughter is a two-sport athlete. She plays lax and hockey, both at the travel level. Uh, during hockey season, hockey is the priority. During lacrosse season, that's the priority. She misses out on winter lax, but it's better for her in the long run for sure. And I will tell you, Mike Simmons, because Mike Simmons w was a lacrosse goalie. You know, you get it, right? And a lot of parents, they, they, they get caught in fear of missing out syndrome. You've heard FOMO, right? Um, and, and so I think one of the big things here, one of the overarching factors for parents is, and this is really hard, guys, so hear me out. Um, I lost a client this year because I said what I'm, back, what I'm actually about to tell you guys right now. As a parent, you have to be careful that you're not trying to have your athlete live your experience in the sport if you play the sport, right? But also vice versa, you're also not trying to worry about your, your athlete living everybody else's experience in the sport because what tends to happen is that you, we cherry pick as parents, we cherry pick. We're like, oh, it's the fall. There's a lacrosse team here and my kids should be on that team. And if they're not on that team, uh, I'm stuck in FOMO and this is going to cause trouble. Or 
you know, and you pick, you pick the season, you pick this team, you pick the sport, you disasterize it. And then your goal, then your athlete feels that, that pressure too. So don't, don't get caught in that. Okay. Uh, Jason Dillon writes, he's been working with son on that nervousness. Cool. Um, Jason, is that the nervousness of playing or not playing? Let me know. Uh, Joel Rose, we are three seasons lacrosse, winter strength and conditioning. Awesome. Now, I just want to go back to that comment that I made at the very beginning, which is sometimes lacrosse is like the best experience your kid can have, right? It's, you know, if, if you're around good programs that provide a good experience, and this is something that I don't always do well with, right? I tend to be the coach that goes like, I need my athletes to, to work no matter what the the situation is, but some programs, you know, they, they give the helmets and the pennies and the shorts and it's, you know, barbecues at this and it's cupcakes here and it's, you know, you know, orange wedges at halftime. Like I get it, but you go back to high school and you're dealing with like last year's jerseys, uh, right. You don't have enough balls at practice. Uh, you know, the coach is also the history teacher and he hates your kid because they suck at history. Uh, right. I get it. But then you get out to a bunch of lacrosse guys and you're having a, a great time. Right. Um, and so that's just, that's part of it. But I do want to share, and I think everybody who's listening to me now, you get this. And if your athlete is listening to me right now, listen, when you go back to your like high school program and it's not as good, um, or vice versa, if rarely, but if you, if you go from your high school program to your, to your travel team and it's not as good, you got to have your kids ready to be just as good in those situations as, uh, as not like one of my lacrosse goal university, uh, goalies that I just did an audit for, uh, they're down in Florida. Their high school program is quite good. The travel teams he's been playing on just are crap. Right. And, um, the D are bad. No one knows where to go. The coaching isn't great, but I, you know, as goalies for all of you, I'll tell you, it's the best place for your goalie to be is on a crappy team. You know, because they get, they get, they got to up their game on so many levels, right? You got to play, you're going to get more shots. You're going to have guys who are, uh, or girls who clear and they're in the wrong spots and you have nobody to clear to. So now you've got to develop these other aspects of your game, like maybe throwing the ball 50 yards to an attack when he's covered, right? Maybe that's the easiest thing to do, right? I went, I lived that. So you just got to embrace it either way, okay? Um, uh, so Jason Dillon writes that his goalie is having, is a little nervous about having taken a break. And so Jason, this is where um, I would encourage you to, to, to tell your goalie about the benefits of, of that nervousness. It's actually gonna help them react faster, right? Um, now, one thing for all of you listening, um, I'm, I did a presentation for a, a local sports group and I'm hoping to get that up uh, soon. Um, it, it was by my hour long presentation on uh, basically athletic success. And, um, the group I talked to was actually a figure skating program. I actually talked to a collegiate baseball team a couple of weeks ago as well. And so I'm going to make that presentation available to all of you. Let me know just in the comments, if you'd like it. And, and, uh, then I'll, um, I'll try to reach out to you once I get it done. Um, but, uh, just leave, if you're live here, just leave me a comment and just say yes. Um, and I'll, tr and I'll send it to you. Um, once I get it live. All right. So it was really, really good. Okay. So I hope I, I, um, Adam Hetrick writes, he's got an indoor lacrosse game every week, tourney first weekend in January, oh, and goalie training one week, and soccer. Or is that goalie training once per week for soccer? Um, but, uh, yeah, because I know some, some any like there used to be tournaments in like San Diego, like that first week in January, right after Christmas, or right after the new year. Um, it, who's Let me know where you're going, and uh, that'll be good to know. All right, so moving on. Um we're going to talk about um, the Lexi Shield, okay? So for those of you watching me live, um, I got sent this by the, the folks at Lexi, um, and um, and um, it was really funny because they they mentioned that they had gotten this really good review from this other lacrosse goalie website that I won't name here because I'm not a fan, um, and uh, that that was supposed to somehow impress me. So for those of you listening to me, for those of you who have been f fans of my work for a while, you know that I pull—I don't pull any punches, or maybe I do pull punches. What's the word? Um, I don't sugarcoat things. Uh, and I want to make sure that you guys have the truth because ultimately I want your athlete to be as empowered as possible. Okay. So in the last couple of years, um, I think because of the internet, we have much more free, free discussion about anything. And 
one of the things that I've noticed, like I've been running my website, I've been running my blog and I've, uh, for a very long time. So I've, I, I've like, I've literally started the blog back in the early two thousands. Um, and so, um, and my newsletter was going around like 35 countries at one point when I was keeping track of that. I, I don't know what it is now. It's probably more than that. But, um, but one of the things that I've noticed is that as the, and if, as the as young guys pop up with websites and they're able to kind of play the Google algorithms and stuff, I haven't done that. Um, partly because th- there's just not enough money in it. I'll be honest. Um, but I would have to go down and completely over overhaul my blog to get seen on Google searches like some of the guys out there are doing. But also one thing I don't do is, and I, I want everybody who's listening to me right now to know this: I never post something that is called clickbait. Right. Basically, there's something in the headline or there's some controversial topic just to get clicks, because you'll notice on my websites, on everything I do, I don't sell anything via affiliate. Uh, I don't I don't do advertising and all that stuff. For those of you who might be unfamiliar, all of that stuff, if you're if you've got ads on your website, if you're if you're if you got links that go through to Amazon, the only link you're going to see of mine that goes to Amazon is for my book. but when you play that game and you start compromising your information, to me, you've lost all credibility. And so my biggest thing is that you, you, all of you know that you can come to me for credible, unbiased answers, okay? Um, and, and that means more to me than anything else, right? Um, if you talk to my wife, she'll just drive, you know, she'll, she'll sing a different tune. She'll be like, you should be doing that stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to because I don't want to compromise that the respect I have for you and the respect you have for me. Okay. So when you go onto a website and it's espousing a piece of equipment or it's, it's, it's blowing up a concept. Um, I just want you to have a second set of eyes on it. Right. And if ever you see something and you're like, well, what do you think? Send me a link, you know, message me, uh, send me an email, coach Edwards, lacrosse com. Right. I'm happy to. Okay. Um, and, um, and, and so one of the things that I want you to know is that, I want to talk critically right now about Lexi Shield. I want to talk about the other options that may be out there. But first and foremost, I want to talk about this idea that there's a problem with concussions and lacrosse goalies. And I'm here to tell you, I don't believe it's true. Okay. Now, some of you listening right now, you have athletes who have had concussions in lacrosse goaltending. And I'm not saying that that's not true. It does happen, but I just want to I just want to knock it down a little bit and and just go, "All right, let's look at this critically," okay? I do believe that some athletes are more prone to concussions than others, okay? The reason why I share this is that my son, so those of you guys, my, my son who's 14 years old wants to play rugby. So he goes to a private school where we live. Uh, they have a rugby program, and it's the best program probably in the province of Alberta where we live. Those of you guys might not know, I'm from Boston. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. All right, so yeah. So when you know all the things you know about concussions and sports and things like that, and your son wants to play rugby, it's kind of a, pardon me, but it's kind of a holy shit moment, all right? And so pardon me for swearing, <clears throat> but just for emphasis. So what I want people to understand is that, is that I believe that the goalie position is probably the safest position on the lacrosse field for gross injuries like concussions, like, um, you know, twisted knees and dislocated shoulders, right? We're just, we're protected by that crease. Um, I do believe that the lacrosse ball for most shooters is not being trying, is not being, uh, is not attempted to be shot at you. It's being the shot, be shot past you, right? So when I hear about goalies getting hit, um, most of the time when a goalie gets hit in the head, it's from a shot that's in close, um, usually off a dodge, Okay. Um, so Jen George, just clarify this for me because I want to make sure I'm speaking every proper Jen George wrote, especially for girls. So, so clarify, cause uh, Jen, I'm talking about a lot of stuff right now. I want to make sure I cover what you're saying uh, correctly. Okay. Uh, so those of you listening on iTunes, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit, but just hear me out here. So for the girls game, especially and the Jen, this might be what you're talking about. A lot of the shots are in close. A lot of the shots are not time and room shots. 
right? So what happens is when we talk about velocities of shots in lacrosse, those velocities come from sampling of shooters shooting uncontested, meaning no D, and they're just full on like time and room shots, which is basically just a complete wind up, go as hard as you can, and and we're gonna put a, a guy behind the the cage with a radar gun, right? Now I would encourage you if if any of you guys are cops or know a cop, um, and if if you if you can. Um, Go to your local police and go, guys, listen, can we do something fun? I want you to show up at our practice, um, uh, like lights on, siren going. I want you to like uh, put our coach in handcuffs, right? But bring your radar gun. And then we're going to, we'll have a joke with the kids and we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll have you use the radar gun. Just stand behind the cage for 15 minutes and we'll take shots. Here's what I'll have you do. And I challenge all of you listening to me to do this, right? Maybe not get the cop and the rest or coach sort of thing, but just get, they've got radar guns, put the, co- put the car like behind the fence. Like, like, you know, if the, if the guns fix the car, like work with me here, right? Just get out there, have your kids shoot time in a room <clears throat> and then have your kids shoot on the run, right? And then have your kids shoot off of like a roll dodge, like an inside roll, you know, they're, they're, five, they're five yards off the cage and they're, they're shooting, right? Um, and you will get drastically different velocities than what you do on those time and room shots. And then here's the other thing that people do is they only pick the fastest shot ever, right? Like, you know, for the men, we think of the, and Joel Rose, maybe you can help me on this. You're, I know you're live here, but there's the long pole that shot like 115 miles an hour, with a carbon fiber long pole. And what that means is a carbon fiber pole gets a lot of whip in it, right? And it's not like shooting with a titanium shaft. It, it, it's, it has a whip and the velocity just goes to the roof. You know, that's different than the girls shooting and the, the boys shooting and all that stuff. Right. Um, so here's what I want you to understand is that I believe that the lacrosse goalie position is, is very safe. And I get no benefit by saying that, guys. Like, I don't. I want to empower your goalie to know that when they're in the cage, if they are wearing, all right, if they are wearing a helmet, um, the, the, lacrosse goal, the lacrosse helmets in general, I believe, f- from sport to sport, are some of the safest out there, okay? And the reason why is, like, in the Cascade, there's this honeycomb, in there, there's some foam um, that that there's some good plastic. The design of the helmet um, is such that if you are facing the ball, right? I believe that there should be a penalty in professional lacrosse and collegiate lacrosse. There should be a penalty on the defense if they turn their head on a time and room shot. There was this this summer. There was a shot going around. Like there was a video on Instagram that was going around. It was some pro defender who like jumps in front of the way of a shot and he turns and he gets hit basically in the spine between his shoulder blades. That to me should be a penalty. And the reason being is that helmets are designed to take impact primarily for the front. Okay. Now for my lacrosse school university members, just a reminder, like in the videos, in the how to train a young new lacrosse goalie, there's videos where I do a thing with goalies where I get them to get used to getting hit with a ball, all right? And so I take them through a process we, where, we, where we're, we're shooting balls at them, first with just our hands, but we're getting them comfortable with what, what getting hit gets hit feels like. Now, just to warn you all, big disclaimer here, all right? No, I don't want any bull, like bullshit, pardon me, on this, but, but I'm soft tossing balls at a goalie with no stick and their chest protector. I'm not hauling ass at their, 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 at their sternum with a lacrosse ball and a lacrosse stick, okay? Bear with me here, all right? Um, I teach them how to take it off their hands, but most importantly, I also teach them how to take it off their helmet, all right, there's a goalie for any of my New York Ranger fan, hockey goalie fans out there, Henrik Lundqvist. Okay, if you just YouTube Henrik Lundqvist head save, some of the European goalies who come from a soccer background, they will, if the shot is high, you will see them actually head the puck 
right? They'll, they'll head it with their helmet and the ball will, and the puck will skip off their helmet and off it'll go. Lacrosse goalies can do the same thing. But one of the things I think happens to young goalies is if they never, ever get a shot off their helmet, um, at a low speed that when they finally get one off their helmet at a high speed, first of all, it's super noisy. Okay. And I encourage all my parents go put on your kid's helmet. If it doesn't fit you, find one that does. Go to your coach and say, hey, listen, can I borrow one of your helmets tonight with a throat guard on it? And take it home, put it on, and then have your goalie throw a ball at your face, all right? And, and you can do this in the kitchen. You can do this in the laundry room. You can do this in the garage. I really don't care. But take that ball off your face and tell me how loud it sounds, Right now, here's the thing: if your goalie has been playing for a long time, hasn't been hit at all, and then all of a sudden they take a shot off the forehead, right off the beak of a of a, of a helmet, not even off the forehead, we're talking just off the beak, and and tell me that that doesn't sound frightening, okay? There is a psychosomatic issue here that I want everybody to be aware of because before you go running out for a Lexi shield or a guardian cap, which, um, I'll put the link to that right now, guardian caps. Um, um, I'm going to put this in the comments for those of you that are live. Um, so I, I'm just here to tell you that the claims that are coming down uh, for these, the benefits. Okay. First of all, for, for the Lexi shield, one of the things that, that happens with the Lexi Shield that in my mind that kind of discredits this just a little bit and they're gonna hate that I'm saying this. But the fixed screw, okay, there's a screw here and they give you two to basically remove the screw that's on the, the, the helmet and you're gonna replace it. The fact you get a fixed screw, all of a sudden that anchors this down pretty, pretty tightly. There is foam, okay, there is foam between the plastic and the helmet and so, and I should take this out of the bag, I apologize for those of you that are alive, all right. So I know guys like, you know, Joel Rose, like I know your goalie is using these. Uh, yeah, Joel writes 123 miles per hour, you know, and the girls game is the same thing. It's like all of a sudden they pick the best result and they're saying that, oh my God, every high school kid shoots it at 123 miles an hour. Um, you know, uh, this is where I don't want you to create a psychosomatic issue with your goalie where they're going like, they, they finally get a helmet off their, off their face mask and they're like, oh, wait. Because you can do this with kids. You can very easily go to a kid and go, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Wow, that was a really hard shot, wasn't it? Yeah, are you okay? Was it loud? Yes, it was. Oh my God. Do you, how do you feel? You feel okay? You feel a little lightheaded? You feel a little greasy? You feel a little like your fingers are tingling? You say that enough to any kid, male or female, and you know what? You're probably going to make a kid pass out, right? That's lacrosse voodoo, in my, in my opinion, okay? So... So Joel uses a Lexi Shield, right? And, and so, and listen, I'm not taking this away. There's benefit to this, okay? There is benefit. I just want you to be aware that you're not setting up a young goalie for thinking like, like oh, if we take this off and you get that shot, that you're going to fall over practically dead, okay? So one thing about the Lexi Shield, I wish these were white. <laughs> like, 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 I mean, come on, guys. Like, I wish these were white for one, okay? Okay. Um, they give you two screws for it, which is awesome. All right, um, but it does again. And there's there's a basically a, a half inch or a what is this? Yeah, it's probably about a half inch of foam on the inside. All right, and um, and um, and so um, they, they say recommended padding replacement after each season of use. Okay, so one of the things this this padding doesn't break down that fast. Um, and one of the things about Noxy rules, I just want you guys to all know this, that Noxy rules, one of the reasons Noxy rules are there and equipment manufacturers like them so much is because there's an expiration date on it. All right. Those of you that remember when, if you had kids, right, when they were young, if you have more than one, if you have a baby seat in the back, in the back seat of your car, and then all of a sudden they put expiries on those thing on the baby seats, you're like, dude, I just spent like a hundred, 200 bucks on this thing. I don't need a new one. Right, it's fine. We spilled a couple of sippy cups on it, but like, and there's some Cheerios stuck in the back, but it's not ruined, right? Plastic doesn't like. It's funny. We talk about plastic not degrading in landfills, but all of a sudden it's going to degrade in the back of your car after a season. 
Like really? Like come on. Like like let's be let's be realistic here. So so should your athlete wear one of these? I'm not going to say yes or no. I will say this, it does fall in the category of patting your kid up in practice so they're not taking abuse potentially that they get in a game, okay? Um if you are getting like if you're playing in like a like and, and Joel, I'm not picking on you Joel at all, but I, there's some men's league where guys are idiots and they shoot at your head. Right? Like I've been there. And you know what I do when I get that ball out of the back of the cage is I fire it at their ass so hard. Right? Um, and I'm like, okay, let's do this again. I, like, I shouldn't share this. I fought a guy once. I, it's probably the only fight I've ever had in my life. But this guy was like, I'm going to shoot pucks at the goalie. Right? And, I, and this was a, it was a hockey game. And I'm like, really? You know, and so I shot pucks, I shot a puck back at him. And hit him square in the back where hockey players no 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 padding whatsoever, and we went at it. And I have to say, it's the only fight I probably ever had in my life, or at least that I remember. So 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 I just want you to know. Listen, if you feel better wearing a Lexi Shield, wear it. Right. If your goalie gets a shot off of their helmet and and it was from and Jen, not to pick on yours, but like if if it's if it, like Jen's daughter hasn't been hit off the head in like two years and then all of a sudden she gets hit from a dodge like a girl inside rolls shoots from like five yards off the crease hits her off the forehead does her daughter have a concussion probably not but everybody right now is so panic laden about concussions and I've said this before I said this a couple years ago that the pendulum always swings we overreact in the short term we underreact in the long term so but what I want all of you who are listening to me to make sure you're not doing is putting your goalie in a position where they think that if they get shot, if they get a shot off the head, that they are somehow unsafe, right? Because I do not believe that to be true, right? Should you wear a guardian shield? Go ahead. Do you want to wear a Lexi shield? Go ahead. But here's what happens, right? You take those off on game day and then that goalie gets hit, right? How are they going to feel? Are they going to feel confident? Or are they going to feel like they have a concussion? So just don't do that. Is that fair? Like everybody said, give me a hell yes or an amen. Like I just want that to happen, right? Because I do believe that the lacrosse, I know this for a fact, that the lacrosse helmet is more, is more protective than most other helmets in any sports. Like hockey helmets are crap. Hockey goalie helmets are crap. Um, Football helmets are, are pretty good. Like they're probably the, the they're pretty good. Um, uh, and and Jonathan Redfern will can speak to this better than I can. There are weight issues. There are there's there's um, there's things about weight and and helmets. Um, just the fact that you have one on can affect how the brain moves within the, the skull. Um, and um, and Joel Rose, we painted ours white. Clear clear no. Uh, j- Joseph Michael asked, like, can it be clear? No, because you're never going to get clear foam. There's a half inch of foam on the back side of this. Um, and um, and um, I think, yeah. And so Jonathan Redford writes an interesting thing. And Joel, maybe you can speak to this if you've been hit. But so the plastic on the Lexi Shield is quite stiff. Okay. So this plastic, I don't know if you can, you can hear it. No, nah, it's not going to do very well. But it's quite stiff. So one of the things when we, when we deal with getting hit, we, what the thing about impact, okay, is when we get impacted by something, what we're trying to do is we are trying to de- either deflect or diffuse that impact. So motorcycle helmets, for example, and I talked about this a couple podcasts ago. Um, my uh, when I was bobsledding, I ha- had a top line motorcycle helmet. The 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 impact inside, or the sorry the. The membrane inside was a matrix of glass, if I remember correctly, right? And so that was meant to absorb the force of if you fell off a motorcycle and hit the road, right? Um, not, and so you don't bounce. So when we have any sort of devices like this, what we're trying to do is to um, deflect, right? Which this, this for sure this does this, okay? And, and I believe, Joel, I'm 100% with you, you get one brain, okay? Right? And we love lacrosse. So is there a deflection potential on this? Yes, depending on the angle that it's it's affixed at. Um, but also, um, is it any better or does it make it worse? That's the question. Um, 
the 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 screw when we have this screwed down to a helmet then makes this hard so then the any force that hits this plastic now goes it has to go somewhere it's all going into that screw into the helmet right so a, so what i would love to see helmets do and you can you can do this um but for sure with the throat guard use a uh, fix it with rubber washers um or string um that can minimize sound impact that can make this escalate because like I do believe wholeheartedly that when you take a kid and you, you, you put something and you throw something and it hits them in the head, it's scary, especially if they're young, right? And, and, and no offense, but more, more the girls than the boys, all right? Because a lot of times the, girl, the boys have been doing stuff, right? A lot of the girls have never worn a, a helmet playing lacrosse, and then they go in the cage after maybe a year or two, and now they get hit in the head with a ball, and they're like, wait, what, what the hell was that, Right? This is really noisy. So, so listen. I'm not saying not to wear the Lexi Shield. Um, yeah, I know, Joel. They, they sent me the test. Joel said they did the testing and study and found it reduced the concussion force by 65. percent I don't believe it. I'm, I'm just here to say. I'm, I'm sure. It, I'm sure it did it by something. And is that benefit sure? Is it 65? percent I disagree. If it was 65, percent I believe that they would build this technology into the helmets. Because everybody is so paranoid about it right now, right? So I, I read that study. I'm just I'm whatever. Like so, I'm not saying don't wear it. I'm all for wearing extra protection, especially in practice. Uh, to um, if a goalie's not going to wear something in a game because if they feel like it's going to move fast, they're going to move faster, which isn't true. But if they're going to do that, fine. If it empowers you to play, 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 right? But don't set yourself up for feeling like all of a sudden I'm more naked or more susceptible because I believe that the helmets your goalies have right now are fine, all right? And mo the most important thing I want for my parents is that they're not walking around thinking that their kid is one shot away from being brain dead, right? Because that's not true, right? It's not true, okay? Um, and so... We know more about concussions now than we ever have before. But if you take all that information, it, it, it basically, if you listen to like Dr. Daniel Amen, he'll tell you your kids should play ping pong, right? And and I don't think that's the answer either, right? We we all love the sport of lacrosse. Like I asked my rugby guys, I said, listen, are you guys just being stupid? And I asked this to one of the most prominent football uh, rugby um coaches in Canada I asked him I said listen are you guys just being stupid about concussions in rugby and he goes you know he goes what we're dealing with right now is we have a sport that we all love we know more about um this than we ever have before but one of the things that we do know is that yes there are people coming out of like football and rugby and they have CTE there's soccer players that come out with CTE but not all of them and we don't know the answer to that just yet all right. So I want to make sure that your athletes are empowered to play the position. Know that they're safe. Understand that if they want to wear a Lexi shield or a guardian cap, go for it. I'm all for that. But don't put yourself into position thinking that this is going to save you from concussions. Um, but uh, over my 25 years of coaching goalies, and you know me, for those of you guys that have listened to me for a long time, you know me. I am not a suck it up sister or toughen up or don't be a pansy. I'm not that type of guy. You all know that, right? So, but what I'm here to tell you is I don't want to fall, I, I don't want you to fall around hype that's not there, right? Um, but is anything better than something? Probably. But one thing I would say about the Lexi Shield, if I was to put this on a helmet, is I would use rubber washers here. I would add, and Joel, maybe you can do this. I would add extra rubber rubber wash washers between the screw and the helmet to provide one extra layer of dissipation before it reaches the helmet. The other thing too, guys, is, is that um, make sure that if the helmet is a little loose, that's also helpful, okay? Um, but... Um, Joel, please do PM me. That'd be great. Um, um, Chris Kobe, Joseph, my school, that would come in handy when I come play lacrosse. All right, people are letting in some comments. A lot, we got a lot, a lot of late people kick, kicking in here. Um, listen, I want to uh, Chris Kobe. Good to see you. First time in. I think Rick Reinecker is always good to see you. Uh, Helen Lang Evans. So I, listen, I hope this was fair to say on the Lexi Shield. Okay. Um, if that helped you, let me know. If it hurt, you can also DM me. Like, if you want to 
a lot of people private message me after these because they want to ask like personal questions and I'm totally for that. I, you know, I just want to help you guys as much as I can. Um, but, um, but just know that I'm not going to hype up something that, uh, that, uh, because most importantly, I don't want your athlete to feel like they're unsafe, right? Because I really feel like they're safe. But seriously, go get a helmet. All, all the parents listening to me, get a helmet, get it on your head, get a throat guard on it. And have your goalie throw balls at your face, right? And and try not to blink, right? That's a fun one. I don't believe in you, blinking is a natural response, so go go ahead and blink. But I just want you to know that um, it, it is. I, I want you to know, and I'll I'll finish here with what Jonathan Redford just wrote. A properly fitted helmet, okay, is more important than any add-on device. All right, so. Um, we can't wrap our kids in cotton balls. All right. That's, that's for sure. But I hope this helped in a lot of ways because I want to, I want my parents who might be a little concerned to relax a bit. I really do. Cause I don't want you going, I don't want you stand on the sideline. I've said this before. You can't stand on the sideline and, and, and think that you're the goalie because you're not. I've, I've dealt with a lot of parents who, who a lot of moms, especially who they are on the sideline. And anytime their goalie gets hit, they're screaming like it's them. You can't do that. Okay. Um, um, and so, so to clarify here, to clarify on the loose helmet thing, I don't want to flop it around your head, but when we're looking about impact and device and we're, we're looking about things, uh, dissipating pressure, we want to make sure that that helmet and talk to cascade, call them. Like seriously, if you got questions about the safety of your kid's helmet, call them, get on the phone with them, ask, you have that right as a, as a consumer, right? Um, and so we want to make sure that you I want to make sure that your goalie is empowered. Okay. And so please, 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 let's make sure we stay there. Okay. So listen, everybody, thanks for watching. Come on over. Okay. If you haven't done this already, come on over to uh, my other group. Find me on, at Olymp Olympic Jonathan on Facebook. That's my other, my other page, my, my main persona. Um, and come join the Raising High Performing Athletes podcast, okay? We're going to be talking about some fun stuff today, and I'm going to be doing that in like seven minutes if you want to join me live, all right? But listen, as always, I can't believe it's December. We're talking this much about the lacrosse goalie position. I just love it, right? So I, I'm glad you guys are all here, and so I'm hoping I'm, hope I'm helping because I want your goalie to have the best 2020 ever, right? For those of you guys that have been listening to me since like when we started this nine months ago, right? There's no excuse for any of you. Um, uh, and from my lacrosse school university members, they're ready to just kick ass in 2020. So I hope that's you too, okay? So thanks, guys. As always, Jonathan Redford, thank you uh, 100%, right? I, I appreciate your input 100%. Joel Rose as well, 100%, all right? And everybody else uh, who commented today, Mike Simmons, uh, Greg Lapham, good to see you. Jen George, as always, right? Um, so I really look forward to taking going into 2020 with a ton of momentum for you as the parent and your goalie, all right? We're going to have this amazing year, all right? So I thank all of you, and, um, and I'll see you in the next podcast, all right? Cheers, everyone. Bye.